Our next speaker is Paul Johnson. He'll talk about Bazel UI. Take it away. OK, so thank you. Um, so Bazel is this amazing tool. It's this great tool. Um, makes us more efficient. And, um, but you know, there, it, is, um, it is a bit of a learning curve. And it is challenging, and particularly if you're not part of the core build team and it's not really your you know, core competency, it can be quite intimidating. And that's a real problem in terms of adoption of Bazel in, in enterprise and organizations. And um, you know, ultimately makes your job harder if, you're, if your users um, you know, have to struggle to learn Bazel. So um, this is a tool I'd like to you know, show you that you can offer to your colleagues to hopefully help decrease the activation energy to learn some of the Bazel concepts and also to give to yourself as sort of a force multiplier um, to learn Bazel faster and, and discover things quicker. So um, it's called BZL, or pronounced bezel. And a bezel is a noun. If you're holding your cell phone, you're touching a bezel. So the bezel is the sort of ring around your phone. And classically, it's the ring around a watch where the, uh, the crystal glass goes in. And so that kind of invokes this thing, which is sort of like a wrapper with sort of a visual interface to uh, the bezel build tool. Um, yeah, so oh, clicker. So uh, first and foremost, just a CLI. This is a statically compiled Go binary with um, you know web server um, embedded in it, and it's built basically in the same way. We're on top of Basilisk, so if you're already using Basilisk, it's the same thing. Um, but it adds a few other commands. So you, there's a there's an install command, so you can install Bazel versions at will. There's a use command, which is a repository rule generator. So rather than having to figure out the SHA-256 on your own, and it, this will spit out an HTTP archive for you, or um, Go repository, or so forth. And then Bazel serve and Bazel open allow you to kind of look inside you know, your Bazel build. And so I guess I'll switch over to a demo at this point. I don't know how I. OK. So I'm here. I'm inside the, the Abcell repository, which has been talked about. And if I type BZL build Abcell base, that's normal, right? Everyone knows what that is. But I don't really know what's kind of happening. So instead of that, I'm going to say open. And it'll drop us into kind of the location in, uh, in the build where we are. And so we're immediately presented with sort of a nicely formatted build rule where the inputs are replaced with links. And so you can easily traverse the build graph um, you know, pretty quickly. And you can, you can go through the uh, build quite easily and even you know, sort of inspect files. And I use this, like sometimes there's a protobuf that I want to see the protobuf, but it's embedded like three levels down, it's cumbersome to get to. And so I'll, I'll kind of use this to kind of inspect those kinds of files. But even more uh, simpler than that, just, just a label. Like I remember when I was first learning Bazel and I first looked at it like a label and it was like, what the? I have no idea what that is. It was just, it, it was hard to learn. But this makes it really clear if I can just, I know it's a, there's a target and I can go look at the package and kind of see what's inside the package and so forth. Or I can go up to uh, the workspace and take a look at all the packages in the workspace and easily kind of click through and, uh, oops, and see that. So if we go to then, um, let's see, strings pass it package and maybe the split test. So, um, so we, we saw the rule. You can also look at the inputs and outputs. For the rule, you can look at all the attributes that are defined and sort of all the ones you're used to, in addition to the ones you don't normally see without looking at the protobuf directly. Um, you can then look at dependencies, and then you can also build. And here we're streaming the build event um, protocol, and so it's, it's useful to, to learn the build event protocol because you kind of reduces the space of the problem space of Bazel. Like once you understand the build event protocol, you understand better about what Bazel is doing, and it seems less magical. So if we do that, then it'll start building targets, and, and it kind of shows us this uh, graph of what's happening, and you can see all the actions that are occurring, and so forth. And so, OK, so that passed, so that was good. We can kind of click through and look at the different. Woo, it worked. Um, 
someone mentioned earlier, you could you know you can look at the um, they're using the checking whether it's cached remotely and you know whether so anyway um, so yeah you can you get to you understand what's happening inside your, your build a little bit better. Let's do coverage because coverage will regenerate all the binaries and so forth. I'm going to cancel this because the code coverage won't work, but. Um, cancel that. But then we can kind of slide through and look at all the different actions that have occurred. And we can sort of see you know, the specific command line stuff that occurred. So it's a, it's a good way to kind of learn your build. This is a bit experimental, but you can also kind of render the build graph also. Um, <laughs> so I'm yet to sort of figure out the right heuristic of complexity versus simplicity with that. But uh, work in progress there. So another thing that's useful is navigating the flag landscape of Bazel. Like there's so many flags and it's hard to know what they are and they're all available but this allows you to kind of be like, all right, I know, I know something. I, I remember there's a remote flag about something. Maybe I'll go here and I can read about the remote instance name. And a nice thing, I don't know if you're using Bazel code search but I find the, you know, Looking up Bazel code search for flags is useful because you go right to the source and you can kind of get more information about what it is because it's often not super well documented. So um, inspecting the flags is good. If we go to the TensorFlow repository too, it gives you sort of a nice sort of formatted understanding of uh, configurations too. So it gives you a sort of a, a window into what the configurations are and so forth. So um, there's a fair amount of other stuff in here, but um, yeah, it's, just, it's a lightning talk. So let's see, what did I want to say after this? So I, I did want to put together a build server for this. Um, you know, this is, this is closed source, it's not free right now. Um, wanted to apply some sort of metric that it's worth my time to continue developing, but um, it is fairly affordable and cheap, especially if you know, you're working for some of these big companies. So. Um, so look out for that so you can download it, build your own personal binary and use it for whatever platform you want. And, um, and then come talk to me about what a tool like this should do and um, you know, how, it can, how it can be improved. So I appreciate your attention. Thank you. Yeah, I think it's a great tool. Uh, questions? Um, uh, it, your website immediately doesn't let me in unless I log in with GitHub. What's up with that? Um, yeah, it's, it does OAuth via GitHub, so it immediately does it. You probably should not do that right away. That's definitely a work in progress. Check back tomorrow if, I'm, if I don't <laughs> continue to um, yeah. underestimate the complexity. Okay, final question. Yeah, I was wanted to ask about the external workspace stuff, because that's the hardest thing to trace, understand where the hell it came from. Yeah, so you can sort of see all the external dependencies. They're kind of categorized, and you can click through and, and go through under, you know, get a better sense of. I probably shouldn't load TensorFlow as a, an example here because I haven't pre um, haven't preloaded it. Um, so let me go back to Absale to do that. But um, yeah, it allows you to kind of go through uh, external dependencies. And oh, another thing it does it'll summarize what the, all the different rules are in there. So you can kind of get a better understanding of like what is the landscape of this repository? What are the rules inside of it? So I can see there's 29 CC binaries in here, and I can you know build those different kinds of things just directly. So, Thank you. all right. Thank you.